A morning police raid at a sweatshop in the heart of Delhi. The search is on to find more children employed in this dingy three-story building. A child campaign group had information of at least 100 children working here, but they could only find 31. Aziz is scared of the commotion at his workplace. He says he does not know his age, but all the children have been told to say that. These children are brought from poverty-stricken villages of India. Parents are paid a few thousand rupees to part with their sons. But for most, the overriding factor is to see their children get a chance to step out of poverty. Child traffickers quickly move them to the big cities and sell them off to contractors. Here, they become invisible. The children end up in sweatshops like these, never to see the money and never to return home. Campaigners say the demand for cheap products in the West is fueling child labor in developing countries. If you keep on buying those things made by child slaves in such conditions, you are equally responsible for the perpetuation of slavery. This goes on because uh, sometimes when the people look for the cheap uh, product and good quality product, they forget that how these products are made. These products are made out of sweat and blood of these children in slavery. The children work for 15 hours a day every day and throughout the time they are employed. It is here they work, sleep and eat. The rooms they live in are dark, dingy and unhygienic. This will be their world for months and even years. Rehman is still scared. He's been working for months but never got paid. He lived with 30 others in a tiny room doing embroidery work on garments. He does not know where the others went but is happy to be amongst the many to get their freedom. So he was frightened of his master that if he tried to run away he would be caught though he want to go back to his mother but he can't because he was under uh, fear. All these children have been found hundreds of miles away from their homes. Now that they are free, under Indian law, they have to be rehabilitated with their families and enrolled in schools. But in most cases, poverty forces them back into sweatshops. Neville Lazarus, Sky News, Delhi.